We're with Nat5. Nat, you've got some big news for us. Yeah, I um, will be signing with the club for a further two years and um, I'm really excited about what the next two years can bring. This was the last year of your previous deal. How was uh, the negotiation? It was super seamless. I've got the best manager in the business, Jason Dover, who spoke with David Walls and sorted it out. And, um, and yeah, it was just a super smooth professional transaction and it allows me to focus on my footy and help this footy club um, be as good as it can be. What made you want to sign on? I was never going to play footy anywhere else. And we know you'd love to get back to playing finals footy. The prospect's looking really good, not just this year, but the next couple of years too. Yeah, it's been a interesting, I guess, um, previous contract for me where we basically went through a complete list, list turnover and rebuild and I haven't played finals since 2015. So um, I feel like there's been a lot of investment into the club and the club has invested in me and um, I like to play long games. I like payoffs in the end and um, I'm really hopeful that at the end of this, there's a really good story. Um, you've achieved so much in this club already, obviously, the, the flag would be the ultimate goal. Yeah, that's every club's goal is to try and win a premiership and for us to be a part of the first premiership adds a little bit extra, I think. And um, and that's a really worthy goal to come in to work each day and work towards. And within that, um, it's not a win at all cost mentality. There's other ways that you can derive meaning in this environment without just winning a premiership. So clearly that's what we want to do, but try and be as um, as good as we can as humans and reach our potential individually and help those around us to do that is um, is what motivates me to come to work. You've just played your first full game since round one. Have you pulled up from that? Good. It's been a um, progressive build, playing a quarter, a half, three quarters, and then a full game. So it's a luxury that we can do that with modern footy and um, everything feels really good and I'll be on track to play again against Richmond next week. How you finding the midfield minutes? Looks like you haven't missed a beat in there. I feel um, like I've got to catch up to speed um, and build some form and confidence in my roles because I'm playing a midfield forward mix, but yeah, enjoying being back out there and um, in the cut and thrust of AFL footy again. And I've just got a bunch of things that I can work on now and continue to improve and hopefully in the back end of the year play some great footy. We've got such a young forward line that they've been playing so well lately. It seems like their form has meant we can use you more in the midfield. Yeah, I think we're getting a little bit more consistency out of our tools with Josh Tracy and Jai Amos in particular. Um, and we've strung some good games together. It was never as bad as it seemed at the start of the year and it's probably not as good as it seems right now. We've won four games, so we need to be quite balanced in our approach and continue to work on improving and getting that chemistry. Um, at the moment, we've got good availability, which is helping and I'll play a role wherever I'm most needed. Jai's in particular has spoken about the influence you've had on him. Have you found his development? You must be really proud of him. I am. Um, yeah, Jai lived with me last year and we built a really good relationship. He taught me about country music and I taught him about getting out of bed before 8am. So um, he had a tough year last year with his injury and missed a lot of footy, but um, to see him now going on with uh, his career, um, yeah, that's, that fills me with pride, but he's got a long way to go and I'll continue to help mentor and guide him through that. The mids with you and they're starting to hum now, how do you think this lineup can stack up against the rest of the AFL? I think we're pretty reasonable. We've got good depth now, particularly with Jago and Will Brody adding to that hard edge. Um, and maybe that's what we lacked earlier in the season. So yeah, the, developing the depth so that when you do lose one or two players is what makes you a quality midfield. And um, I wouldn't say we're in the best couple of um, teams in the comp in terms of our consistency at the moment. But I think with Joel Corey leading us, um, we can definitely aim to be that in the very near future. Um, we've had four wins in a row against some really good teams, but it's going to take some good footy just to make the top eight. Um, how will the players approach the second half of the season? Yeah, I don't think we just, we don't look at the back end of the year. We look at Richmond and, and that's all we need to focus on. We, in this business, get lulled into wondering about the big picture all the time. And um, we need to focus on preparing really well for what lies directly in front of us, and that's Richmond. And how did you use your break to refresh before we head into preparing for the Tigers? Um, I was uh, able to get down south and go for a bit of surf and took my dog down there and saw a couple of the other players. So yeah, just good to um, just to check out for a couple of days. 
the fans will be thrilled with the news and, and they'd love seeing you back. What's the message to them? My message to our Fremantle family is just thank you for the support that they've shown me across my career, particularly the last two years, which has been pretty challenging for me. Um, and my role within the club has changed a bit, but I've felt the support from our fans has only grown for, for me and for our club. And um, yeah, as I said, I would never have played footy anywhere else other than here. And um, I'm hopeful that they can be part of um, a pretty special couple of years coming up for our club. Mm -hmm.